Hello and welcome to the Secrets of a Witch podcast with yours truly, Sabrina Scott, who is currently sick with something. I don't know what, it's not COVID, <laughs> but I wanted to make a few podcast episodes before the end of the year as we're almost there. And so I guess you guys just have to deal with my squeaky frog voice. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds a little bit intense, but hopefully it's not that hard to listen to. Anyway, on the Secrets of a Witch podcast, I talk a lot about life, love, healing, witchcraft, magic, spirituality, tarot, feminine energy, and everything in between. And on today's very short episode, since I am sick, (laughs) I just wanted to talk a little bit about the pressure to end the year strong and how I'm actually choosing to end the year in a totally chill and soft way. Obviously, part of it is because I'm sick. As you guys can hear, I've been sick for like a week, unfortunately. Uh, Knock on wood that that goes away soon. So part of it is forced and part of it is mercury retrograde. But I also think that it is really important to honor times for rest and rejuvenation and just doing fuck all, honestly. Like, I've been watching movies, reading random books, like, chilling out, sleeping, I don't know, cooking. (laughs) And I really think there is something to be said for deciding not to end the year off strong and deciding to end the year off slowly with chillness like you know to end the year off softly and I know there's going to be some of you who are listening who you maybe you're working on New Year's Eve like maybe you are I don't know working at a club or a bar or Maybe, I don't know, you work with the public. Maybe you're driving the buses that are, at least in Toronto, going to be running all night to get people home safely. Maybe you're driving for Uber and that's going to be a really big night for you. Again, just getting everyone home safely. Maybe you work for the police and you are going to be trying to make sure everyone is safe and no craziness happens on New Year's. So I know not all of us are able to kind of end the year with this like chill, chill vibe moment. Um, But I do, I just wanted to address this, this uh, very common trope, right? Of this pressure to finish strong. And I don't think we always have to finish strong. I think sometimes we, we can finish strong. I think it depends what it is we're doing. But I think there's also something to be said for finishing not strong, like finishing with like, a limp and a sputter, (laughs) which is how I feel like I'm ending the year. And you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. Like (laughs) there's been so many factors and so much stuff going on for me in the past few weeks that I'm like, you know what? Let's just start fresh in January. And part of that is being sick. Part of it is transferring like my entire email list and all of my courses onto a completely new platform Part of it is a bit of a rebrand that I'm doing in the new year. Like it's going to be same old me, obviously, but it's just being a little bit more explicit about that meanness, I guess. And, you know, the me that you guys have all come to know and just having the, I don't know, public presence, like reflect that a little bit more. You guys will see what I mean on January 1st. But I think there's something to be said for just knowing when our body is like, nope, we're done. Like I think there is those times when we do benefit from pushing ourselves through and leaping over that finish line. And, you know, I've definitely pulled some all-nighters and some really late nights hitting some deadlines for various projects. Like I hustled like hell to get all of the journals that I released this past year, all the three journals, the one magic journal, the two tarot journals. I really hustled to get those done. And I'm sure 2024 is going to be full of some deadline hitting for me too. I think it's also really important to be able to just sit with ourselves and 
like be honest about when it is important to finish strong and when it's important to just kind of throw in the towel and be like, you know what? <laughs> like we like this really isn't going to make a difference if I finish strong or not. Like it's it's okay to just lean into that softness if that is what we feel like we are called to do. So I think there's a time and place for both. And if you are having that slow movement right now I just wanted to give you a little bit of a high five because it can be really difficult to give ourselves permission to be in that slower energy even though the astrology right now it that seems to be very much what the vibe is you know with the retrograde and all of that but it it can be really easy for all of us to fight that you know, to fight that and be like, no, I have to, especially if we have our own business, it can be really easy to get pulled into this spiral where we feel pressure to, oh my God, it's a new year. I have to like launch something every second of the day on New Year's Eve. I have to launch something and New Year's Day, I have to launch something and blah, blah, blah. And obviously the right time is the right time whenever you decide that is. And it can be any date of the year it can be in alignment with any moon phase it can be in alignment with any month and so it is so important to make time to listen to our own internal rhythms our own ebbs and flows and to also listen when our body is begging for that breath of rest of sleep of being lazy making soup, eating cookies, and cuddling with cats. That has been my past week. And as much as I kind of would have loved to be able to go outside and hang out with friends and like go do this and go do that and, you know, launch this and launch that and do all the things, there is also something really nice about just giving myself, and I hope you guys are doing the same, giving ourselves permission to just fucking exist and just do whatever. Like, I've been watching stupid movies that have nothing to do with anything. Like, I just watched Michael Clayton. <laughs> Yesterday, I watched Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> and I know that's very off-brand for me. And that's part of the point, is giving ourselves permission to do that shit. That, you know, that's, is that going to help my career? No. <laughs> Am I going to write a think piece about either of those? Absolutely not. But there is something really nice about doing things just for the fuck of it. You know, like when you can't post about it, when when it's not something you can tie into your passion projects or your work or whatever. And it's just something for the sake of it. I think there is something important about being able to embrace that aspect of things and not put so much pressure on ourselves to always be doing things for a purpose like obviously there's the flip side of it which I do see where people are just so in the deep end of watching things for the fuck of it or wasting their life away on Netflix repeats of whatever and like never doing anything like that's kind of the flip side of what I'm talking about but for many of us that can be an unfamiliar thing and taking up more space with that, oh, I'm just going to watch this thing just for the pleasure of it, just for no reason, because I'm sick and it's this was recommended and okay, fine. <laughs> and then actually really enjoying like both of those like very manly movies, <laughs> interestingly. And there is something beautiful about that. Making space for those surprises, making space to engage with media or whatever that you might like usually think is a waste of time and making the space to waste that time and being open to the surprise that that experience that exploration might give you that's the episode I know short and sweet just very chill very contemplative I hope everyone had a wonderful full moon the last full moon of 2023 I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and I guess Hanukkah to everyone who celebrated all of the things. I'm sure there's a million other holidays. Winter solstice, blah, blah, blah. Happy all of the holidays. 
it rained here in Toronto, no snow, which has made me a little bit sad. I do love the rain, but I'm looking forward to the snow. I love all my seasons, which is part of why I live here. What else I want to say? We are just easing into New Year's Eve. And I'll have another last and final episode of the year for New Year's Eve, where I'll talk a little bit about intention setting is my favorite fucking part of the year. Very typical Virgo rising of me to absolutely love making New Year's affirmations list. I fucking am obsessed with it. And I'll share even a little bit about my own affirmations lists and my intention setting list for 2023. I did hit most of them. So I'll just share that practice with you guys. I think you might get something out of it. And yeah, that's it for now. If you guys do want to grab my Claim Your Magic New Year's Affirmation series, you can find that on my website. Um, It will lead you to the old website. So I might have to transfer your membership over to the new one. But don't worry, if you do decide to purchase it, you will get access forever. That is how I do things. Don't worry. And stay tuned. I will be doing a few live master classes in the new year. One will be on reading tarot for the year ahead, and then the other one will be on protection magic. So stay tuned. I won't be announcing those till the new year, but I'm really, really excited to teach those both in January. As always, you can create my website, sabrinamscott.com. You can grab a cute and cozy sweater for this wintry season or a cute poof ball hat at shopsabrinamscott.com. Of course, I've got two books out, Witch Body and Curse and Cure, and three different journals out, one for magic and rituals, and then two for the tarot, of course. Many more to come. I have so much fun stuff planned for 2024, and if you do want to let me know what you want to see from me, what do you want me to be talking about teaching about in the new year I would absolutely love to hear from you my email address is ceo at sabrinamscott.com and I'll catch you guys in the next episode much love bye